Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Huge well welcome back, everyone, to the special weekend edition of the Markets Around the World. My name is K2, and as per usual, we'll be covering everything from the latest data macro news stories and, of course, key levels that you need to be watching. If you love markets like we do, remember to subscribe and help better educate yourself about how these markets actually work together. So let's talk about what happened on the market and outlook to come. U.S. stocks could run into a mousetrap en route back to record territory, with this week's reading of consumer prices potentially being the year's most consequential. Inflation in the past three months has been out of whack with the Federal Reserve's goal of achieving a 2% annual rate, with energy and housing costs helping push the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, for March up to a 3.5% yearly rate. When the Fed says it is data-dependent, every time there is a data release, it is potentially a market-moving event, said Matthew Bartolini, head of SPDR Research at State Street Global Advisors. Fed Chair Jerome Powell, in early May, soothed investors by suggesting the central bank's next move on interest rates likely would be a cut, not another hike, even while progress on inflation appears to have stalled. Stocks and bonds rallied last week, with the S&P 500 index ending Friday up 1.9% for the week, at 5,022 or 0.5% off its record close in late March. The recent market volatility may not be solely attributable to economic shifts and the Federal Reserve's actions. There's a growing realization that stocks might have become overvalued. May brought a 3.7% rise in the S&P 500, a stark contrast to April's 4.2% drop. The prevailing narrative of bad news is good news, suggests that a soft economy benefits stocks due to potential interest rate cuts by central banks. This week's rally seemed fueled by weak U.S. job reports, sparking hopes of a forthcoming summer rate cut. However, it's worth noting that investors aren't necessarily betting on a weak economy. Despite concerns, the U.S. labor market remains robust, and global economic indicators point to continued growth. Valuation may have been a key driver behind April's sell-off, and May's subsequent rebound. Sectors trading above expected earnings levels faced significant declines, indicating that market prices were perhaps out of sync with underlying fundamentals. Moreover, there's evidence to suggest that companies are being rewarded less for beating profit expectations and punished more severely for missing them, underscoring a potential tug of war between share prices and valuations. While economic factors certainly play a role, the future challenges facing the stock market may be more rooted in its own dynamics rather than broader economic trends. Debate over whether U.S. interest rates are high enough deepened among Federal Reserve officials this week and may be stoked further after a key survey showed a jump in consumers' inflation expectations. There are important upside risks to inflation that are on my mind, and I think there's also uncertainty about how restrictive policy is and whether it's sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to the U.S. Central Bank's 2% target, Dallas Fed President Lori Logan said at a Louisiana Bankers Association conference in New Orleans. I think it's just too early to think about cutting rates. I think I need to see some of these uncertainties resolved about the path that we're on, and we need to remain very flexible, Logan said, though she did not directly address whether she feels the Fed may need to again raise its benchmark policy rate from the 5.25% 5.50% range that has been maintained since July. In an appearance on CNBC, Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari said he's in a wait-and-see mode regarding what's next for central bank policy and the Fed can stay at current rates as long as needed to bring inflation down. But he added, there is a high bar to concluding that higher rates are needed to cool inflation. After a quiet week for U.S. economic indicators, this week will heat up with Wednesday's release of the key April Consumer Price Index, CPI. Attention is focused on potential interest rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. The trend toward lower inflation was interrupted in the first quarter, raising fears of higher inflation and less easing from the Fed. Fed Chair Jerome Powell has outlined two potential paths to cuts renewed confidence in low inflation, or unexpected weakening in labor markets. Powell will speak before the CPI data is released on Tuesday at 10 Basakur a.m. Eastern. Wall Street economists expect headline CPI inflation to rise 0.4% in April, with core inflation expected to tick lower. 
April retail sales data is also expected on Wednesday, along with weekly jobless claims on Thursday. Economists anticipate a moderation in retail sales after a strong gain in March and a fall in jobless claims following an unusual rise. With the Fed monitoring the labor market's strength, all eyes will be on the upcoming data releases. The U.S. stock market's ascent for 2024 may have peaked, according to David Costin from Goldman Sachs Group. He predicts no further returns for the S&P 500 this year, forecasting it to end at 5200. Despite a 9.3% climb in the S&P 500 this year and a 3.5% increase in May, Costin warns that the market is overpriced. Growth stocks, particularly in AI, are trading at a substantial premium. NVIDIA Corp., a key player in AI chips, has seen a 79% surge in 2024. However, Costin warns of potential slowdowns in revenue growth for some AI leaders, posing risks to the market. The broader market remains less expensive than the S&P 500, which is heavily weighted towards mega-cap firms. While the U.S. economy thrives with low unemployment and improving inflation, the Fed may still hold off on rate cuts until later this year. Next week's focus will be on U.S. inflation data for April, which could influence the Fed's decisions. Despite recent market volatility easing, caution remains high. All right, let's see some data that I want to show you guys this week. We begin with the U.S. is facing a looming labor crisis. The native-born civilian population has seen a significant drop, decreasing by 2.6 million from July 2023 to March 2024, reaching 168.2 million. In contrast, the foreign-born population has surged by 2.7 million during the same period, hitting a record 40.5 million. However, many of these individuals lack work permits, exacerbating labor shortages. Several factors contribute to the shrinking labor supply, including early retirements, limited access to childcare, and an aging population. These trends indicate that the labor market is set to become even tighter in the near future. The US IPO market has just witnessed its strongest quarter in two years. In the first quarter, the value of IPO deals on U.S. stock exchanges hit $9.6 billion, marking the highest figure since Q1 2022's $14.2 billion. The surge in risk appetite has driven a significant uptick in IPO activity. However, it's worth noting that in Q1 2021, during the peak of the boom, the value of IPOs reached a staggering $149.6 billion, which is 14 times higher. While listing activity is still far from the level seen in 2021, it has been steadily increasing. The question remains, is the IPO market making a comeback? Another data that I want to show you guys is, U.S. housing affordability has reached alarming levels. Over the past four years, U.S. rents have surged at a rate 1.5 times faster than household incomes. Nationwide rents soared by approximately 30% from 2019 to 2023, while average salaries only increased by 20%. This trend of rental cost, increases outpacing wage growth is evident across the majority of the top 50 metropolitan areas, with only six exceptions. In cities like Tampa and Miami, rents have spiked over three times faster than salaries during the same period. Moreover, the median rent price in the U.S. is nearing a record high of $2,100 per month. These concerning statistics indicate that housing affordability continues to deteriorate posing significant challenges for many individuals and families. There's growing evidence that inflation is accelerating, as indicated by recent developments in U.S. labor costs. In the last quarter, U.S. labor costs saw the most significant increase since Q1 2023. The Employment Cost Index, a key measure closely monitored by the Fed, surged by 1.2% in Q1 2024 surpassing expectations and following a 0.9% increase in Q4 2023, according to BLS data. This rise in labor costs mirrors the pace seen in mid-2022 when U.S. inflation exceeded 9%. These findings suggest that wage pressures are intensifying, contributing to the broader acceleration of inflation. The last data that I want to show you guys is, since August 2021, a staggering $2.1 trillion of excess savings has been drained from the U.S. economy. Following the period from March 2020 to August 2021, 
during which $4 trillion in stimulus measures led to the accumulation of $2.1 trillion in excess savings. Households have been rapidly depleting these funds at a rate of approximately $70 billion per month, reaching $72 billion in March 2024. Concurrently, U.S. credit card debt has surged by $330 billion, hitting a record high of $1.1 trillion. Despite these alarming trends, savings rates in the U.S. have dwindled from 3.5% in February to 3.2% in March, marking the lowest level since November 2022. This data underscores a concerning shift where savings are now viewed as a luxury, highlighting the financial strain experienced by many households. How are the Magnificent 7 tech stocks doing so far this year? We begin with NVIDIA is up plus 81.5% and Meta is up 34.5%. Amazon is up plus 23.4%. Alphabet is up plus 20.8%. Microsoft is up plus 10.3%. But Apple and Tesla was down so far this year. Apple is down 4.9%. Tesla is down 32.2%. The fear and in index currently stands at 48, indicating a neutral sentiment. Regarding the upcoming Consumer Price Index, CPI released this week, there is potential for significant shifts in market sentiment, depending on the data. If the CPI data shows a higher than expected inflation rate, it could fuel fears of further interest rate hikes by the Federal Reserve to combat inflation, potentially leading to a sell-off in equities and a rise in bond yields. Conversely, if the CPI data comes in lower than anticipated, it could alleviate concerns about inflationary pressures and prompt a rally in stocks as investors anticipate a more dovish stance from the Fed. Overall, the CPI release is likely to be closely watched by market participants, and any surprises in the data could result in notable movements across asset classes. And here is the picture of this week's most notable earnings. These are the earnings that I'm considering to play or watch. If you want, you can pause the video and screenshot it for later use. Let's do some chart analysis and wrap up the video. We'll start with the SPY 4-hour chart. What's happening here is that the bulls have won the battle and broken the trend line. As we head into this week with the CPI news, we could potentially see new all-time highs again. If we break the all-time high, the next level to watch is 530. However, if CPI comes in worse than expected and the market starts to sell off, I anticipate a downside target around 504 to fill the gap. Moving on to the next chart, Let's look at the QQQ one hour chart. If the price breaks above 443, the bulls could take charge. However, if the CPI data disappoints, the price may break below 435 and head towards 430 to fill the gap. Continuing with our analysis, let's examine the IWM four hour chart. If the price is rejected again at the 210 level, I would anticipate a downside target of 198, with the next target at 189. However, if the price manages to break above 212, we could potentially see further upside for IWM. Wrapping up with our final chart, let's take a look at gold. If this indeed forms a cup and handle pattern, we could anticipate more upside with the next target around 2420. Additionally, some traders are discussing the possibility of a head and shoulders pattern. If both patterns play out, it suggests that the bulls are still in control, paving the way for further upside for gold. Key events this week, on Tuesday, Home Depot earnings, Alibaba earnings AMD US PPI inflation and also Fed Chair Powell speech. On Wednesday, US CPI inflation, US retail sales, NY Fed manufacturing survey, and also we have Cisco earnings. And on Thursday, Walmart, WMT earnings. Initial jobless claims Philly Fed manufacturing survey. All right, folks, that's all for this weekend's video. If you found value in this video, please subscribe and share it with others. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye for now.